Seahawks today coming up in just a few moments. But before we get to today's show, want to make sure that you are an award-winning subscriber to Seahawks today and you have those notifications turned on. Hit that bell and go into your settings and select all so you never miss an episode of Seahawks today. We have 644 new subs this week. Appreciate you being a part of what we're doing ever since our draft coverage. Let's ride the momentum and keep it going here on Seahawks today and be a subscriber with those notifications turned on. Speaking of the Noti gang, I got to tell you about some of our guys that are now a part of what we're doing and have those notifications turned on. Jansen, Jeremy, Seth, Breezer, Jacob, all you guys are rock stars. We appreciate you being a part of what we're doing here on Seahawks today. If you want a shout out, then you got to have your notifications turned on, and we'll mention you next time here on Seahawks Today. It is our mailbag edition of Seahawks Today. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. And we have plenty of comments to get to that come straight from our community tab on YouTube. That's on YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. The only way that you can be a part of of the mailbag is if you are a subscriber to the channel. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this week's mailbag. You guys have questions. I have answers. And our first question this week comes from DJ. DJ wants to know, out of this year's draft picks, who do you see being starters year one? Great question, DJ. And that was one topic we actually covered earlier this week here on the channel. But I will reiterate that I believe that the Seahawks found four day one starters with their first four picks in the 2022 NFL draft. We know that Charles Cross is going to slide right in to that left tackle spot. Don't expect him to bring Dwayne Brown back. Boy, Mafe should be one of your starting edges. Kenneth Walker the third. although you bring back Rashad Penny as well as Chris Carson, I think Walker is better than both those guys. I think he will earn the job before the season begins, but it'll be a back by committee for the most part. Whether he's officially the starter or not, I do think at the end of the day, he will be RB1 of getting the most carries and will earn that himself. And then Abraham Lucas will be your starting right tackle. The thing that's going to be interesting to watch with both Cross and Lucas is that both of them will be your starting tackles, but they're going to have to learn how to run block. Both excellent pass blockers and come from schemes and Mississippi State in Washington State that were pass heavy that didn't run the football a whole lot. So they'll be learning the offense together when it comes to run blocking. And when you look at this quarterback situation in Seattle right now, these guys are going to have to run block a whole lot based on what the Seahawks plan to do going forward. But great question there. Next question comes from Dat Fat Rat. (laughs) The rat wants to know, what are the Seattle's biggest team needs after the draft? Well, You still don't have a long-term answer at quarterback. The Seahawks did not address that in this draft. And so we've talked about on this channel for a long time whether they trade for a quarterback like Mayfield or Jimmy G or maybe Daniel Jones will be on the market here soon, whatever it may be. Those are possibilities, but they don't have the long-term solution. Although they brought in Drew Locke and they brought back Geno Smith, none of those guys are the long-term answer. So quarterback – Still a need there. Inside linebacker, also defensive tackle is up there. They could use a rotational player in the interior on that front. The Seahawks, they drafted nine players, including three in the top 41. The roster is a lot better, but there are still needs to fix when it comes to this team heading into 2022 as far as I'm concerned. Thanks for the question. Next one comes from Freckly, Marmot17. Do you think the Seahawks will wait until the next NFL draft to get a quarterback? Well, I would think all signs point to right now that the Seahawks are going to get a quarterback in 2023 and probably within the first round. And they have several options. I want to show you those here in just a second of what those options will be. relates to our next question. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and let you guys weigh in. In the comments section, will Seattle draft a quarterback in round number one of 2023? That's the pinned comment on our video today. So you'll get an ad break here in just a second. While the ad's played, you don't have to worry about watching the damn ad. Instead, go to the comments section and type in D for draft, P for pass. What will the Seahawks do? 
Tell us in the comments what you think Seattle will do if they will draft a quarterback in 2023 right now in the comments. So, the next question, which comes from Anish Anad, do the Seahawks have a chance to draft Bryce Young or C.J. Stroud in next year's draft? Absolutely they have a chance to draft one of those two guys. And in fact, here are five names I'm looking at for this next draft in 2023. And guys that if you're watching college football on Saturdays, you should keep your eyes on in particular. Not saying that these are the five best quarterbacks by any means, but as of right now, the names I would keep an eye on at this point in time. Obviously, some guys will emerge as the season goes along. you got to start off with Bryce Young, the reigning Heisman Trophy winner in Alabama. He's projected to be the number one overall pick if the draft were held today. He and C.J. Stroud both would have been picked ahead of any of these quarterbacks in this year's draft class. So, C.J. Stroud had a big year at Ohio State, although he's losing a couple of top receivers that went in the first round of this year's draft we're going to find out how good he really is. And Ohio State doesn't have a great track record when it comes to NFL quarterbacks, so something to keep in mind there. Spencer Rattler, he goes from the University of Oklahoma to South Carolina, and there was high hopes. Rattler was supposed to be the number one pick in this year's draft, but had a bad year, lost his job to Caleb Williams. Now he goes to South Carolina. He's going to be joined by his former assistant coach, Shane Beamer, who's the head coach there at South Carolina, doing a very good job. He's expecting a big bounce back here. He'll be named to watch. And then a couple more SEC quarterbacks, Anthony Richardson at Florida and Will Levis at Kentucky will be some names to watch. I fully anticipate the Seahawks drafting a quarterback in the first round next year. And right now, I would think it's one of these five guys, but we'll see if someone else has emerged. Great question. Next one from Nicholas. Nicholas still trying to make this Papa Jones thing happen. I'm not Papa John or Papa Jones. Just call me Tyler. That's fine. Whatever it is, here's a question from Nicholas. What do you think about the Seahawks signing Nick Foles? He's been good a few times. He has been good a few times. A former Super Bowl MVP. Although Nick Foles might be the worst quarterback in the history of the National Football League to start and win a Super Bowl uh, right up there with Trent Dilfer and company. But nonetheless, he did get the job done and was a Pro Bowler in 2013 and has the NFL record for all-time pass completion percentage in the playoffs. I like the story of Nick Foles, but I don't like the idea of actually playing with Nick Foles in the regular season. Look, Seahawks don't have much money to spend, and they have committed to Geno and to Drew Locke. I would be shocked if they bring in another quarterback at this point. If it's not Baker Mayfield, I don't think it's anybody right now, and I don't think they're spending money on Nick Foles. Nick Foles is one of the best stories, I think, in the history of this league, considering that all that he went through and his struggles and such, you can read into that. What he did to come back and win a Super Bowl is terrific. But for the Seahawks right now, it's not a good fit. I think Nick Foles will sign somewhere. He will play football in 2022, but I don't think it's going to be with the Seahawks. But a very good question. Thanks for sending that in. Seahawks today is bringing you daily coverage here on the channel, and you got to be a subscriber to get the latest news and rumors from Chat Sports, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. And as we told you earlier, got to have those notifications on so you never miss a moment here on Seahawks Today. We certainly have you covered. Subscribe today, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. Next question comes from Lincoln. Nice dog there, by the way. Lincoln wants to know, do you think Jacob Eason has a chance to beat out Geno Smith and Drew Locke. Well, you know, we haven't really seen a whole lot of Jacob Eason, if we're going to be completely honest with you folks. He's a former starting quarterback at Washington and Georgia. He's only played in one NFL game. That was a loss last year when he was with the Colts back on September 19th to the Super Bowl champion Rams, 27-24. to And he joined the Seahawks back on October 20th, was claimed off waivers, did not take – a single snap for the Seahawks last year. So we don't know that much about Jacob Eason. I'll say this much. Of what I've seen from Jason Jacob Eason in college, it wasn't anything to write home about. From his time at Georgia to Washington, he was just okay. He wasn't anything special. But obviously everything changes in the National Football League. Look, personally, I think this is an open quarterback competition. And I would say that the favorites are – Drew Locke and Geno Smith, and I would lean towards Drew Locke, although Geno Smith knows this system 
played in it last year. But without there being a clear answer, I think Jacob Eason has a shot. If I had to put a number on it, I would say it's still very low that he starts game one. I would put it at less than 5% chance. But nonetheless, I do believe this is an open competition, and and he'll have his chance to earn it. If he shows something that we haven't seen that no one's seen before, then, yeah, he could earn the job. But I, I just don't realistically see that happening. He'll have a chance to compete, but he won't get the job. What do you guys think? Tell us in the comments section who will be the starting quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. Pick a quarterback right now. Type DL for Drew Locke, type GS for Geno Smith, or type JE for Jacob Eason. Pick one of those guys. Let us know who you think will be the Seahawks starter come day one, whether it's Drew Locke, Geno Smith, or Jacob Eason. This question comes from Pigmasters32. Should we be open to trading Tyler Lockett? He doesn't fit our timeline, and I think we can get quite a bit of value trading him to a team like the Packers. Well, the Packers certainly could use the receiver help, but let's go ahead and look at the situation with Tyler Lockett right now. He's 29 years old, coming off a career high in receiving yards for a single season, uh, just less than 1,200. First-team All-Pro player back in 2015, four years remaining on his contract with a potential out in 2024. But here's the deal. Look, Tyler Lockett at 29, we don't know if his best years are behind him or not. But what we do know is that he's not getting any younger. With all that being said, this would be a guy that if you were in the Seahawks situation, you would absolutely say, yeah, he's a piece that you could probably trade and get some value for. But the way that his contract's structured with the cap hit and such and the money that the Seahawks will have to pay him no matter what, it just simply doesn't make sense to trade Tyler Lockett right now. It will cost you too much than what you would get in return for Tyler Lockett. So, you know, I like Tyler Lockett. He and I are both from the same hometown in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He's been a great story, and he's an incredible human being. Um, I like Tyler Lockett. I think he's going to be in Seattle. I don't think they're going to move on for him. If his contract situation was different, I think they would move on from him. But with the way things are structured, it would just cost them too much. What do you guys think? Should the Seahawks trade Tyler Lockett? Here's your chance to weigh in. Let your voice be heard. Let's get real loud here. Type HY for hell yes. Type HN for hell no. Let us know what you think. Should the Seahawks trade Tyler Lockett? HY for hell yes. HN for hell no. And our final question today, it comes from Caleb. Caleb wants to know, should the Seahawks trade for a cornerback because we don't have a good cornerback, let's be real here. So when you look at the Seahawks team, Trey Brown is there, Sidney Jones is there, and of course they made the uh, draft pick of Kobe Bryant there in the fourth round from Cincinnati. Look, cornerback is not one of the strength positions for the Seahawks team, but I really like what they're doing at the safety spots with Quandre Diggs and Jamal Adams. I think those safeties will make up for some of the flaws that you see from the cornerback position. And if you have a good enough pass rush, that can also cover for some of those corners as well. If they get more pressure on the quarterback, in theory, then you don't have to get as much out of those cornerback positions. So personally, the Seahawks are not a Super Bowl contender. If they were a cornerback or two away from being that, then yeah, you say, of course, go ahead and make a move. Go get a cornerback. But the Seahawks aren't there right now. So... I don't think that you necessarily have to go get a cornerback right now. I would like to see them find another corner in next year's draft and see what value they can develop out of Kobe Bryant and such and see what they can do with him. But right now, I don't think you necessarily are in the mode where you need to trade for a cornerback, even though the position's not anything of strength. But nonetheless, thanks for the question, Caleb. That does it for the mailbag this week. We do this every week on the channel. Be a subscriber. Go to the community tab. That's the only way you can take part in the mailbag, and we'll take your questions and do our best job to answer them for you here on Seahawks Today. Thanks for joining us.